hottest sound on the planet. This one straight to a boy there. You better praise it, no can it. Left by a shield and a friend. I am P45 if you can it. Fire red and dead, nigga. She came along with our sound To make her think she's been around And oh, I'm really glad I found My lady My lady Oh, my lady Greetings and bless up world, this is Vivian Jones, see? Yeah man. <laughs> can I thank you first of all for letting us interview you? Yeah man, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> Please, can you tell the Firewood family a little bit about yourself? A about yourself, bit. yeah. Well, it's a holy... Where can I start? Where you want to start? Where can I start? <laughs> from because the beginning. From the beginning? Yeah. Jamaica? Yeah. Okay. Mommy and Daddy? Yeah. Yeah man. <laughs> okay. Daddy. You moving out in yet? Not right Mr. Now, Ethelbert uh, Jones wait, and the so late, the great Mama Pearl Jones. Bring yeah, yeah, yeah. forth one child, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the first child for Grandpa yeah. Theophilus Jones and Grandmother Loretta Jones. Thanks. And name them, see, because them is great. Yep. Because true for them greatness, I am here today. Without them, we wouldn't have none of you. Right. So, yeah. I have to big them up all the time. Now, as for the music thing, yeah. the career never started in Jamaica. Okay. Started in England. What started in Jamaica was the voice okay. and the man. All of them things that started in Jamaica. But when it comes to the arm, um, um, music industry and stuff, recording, mm -hmm. studio and all of that. That started in England, Northwest, Northwest 10. Okay. Owls them. Yeah. Wills them, knees them, all of the den them. <laughs> so, so in Jamaica, you sang, but it started properly here. Yeah, man. When Grandma came to church, yeah, I was singing loud in the church, and the, the, the pastor said to Grandma. He may have a lovely voice. And grandma says to him, Well, time is longer than rope, we will see. <laughs> so, we there and now. Yeah. And everyone can see, you know, what they saw in the beginning. What was your first release? And please tell, tell us what your first album was. Okay, and tell him my first album is Bank Robbery album, which I did for Rough with Rough Cut Band. Yeah. Also, Northwest bass. Yeah. Because we all grew up together in other music, you know? Yeah. So, um, they were the first one who I did an album with, you know? Yeah. The first single now, go back a long way. And um, there's a, a bit of mix up in it because we have, I had a single out called um, It's a Heartache, which was a cover song. This was done in about 1978. It's a Bonnie Tyler song, cover song. You want me to sing this song? Yes, please. It's a heartache, nothing but a heartache. 
Hits you when it's too late. It hits you when you're down. That song was one of my first records where they took me into the studio. And um, then we did a thing with our youth band. We booked the studio ourselves because this time now we start to learn about booking studios and, and you know. So we kind of just start in another industry. As we youth band, we went in and we do another song called Jam Music. Very powerful roots too, which is still wanted today, in demand today, that tune, Jam Music. Some people are selling it on, um, on um, that music site there for £50 for one seven inch copy. Really? Yeah, and I'm thinking when I made that song, I didn't get £50. <laughs> so, you know, this is how like, this is how it goes, you know? Yeah. But we're not going to cry no. and, and, and complain and, and mourn over them something there. We're just going to carry on. Yeah, keep climbing. That's right. <laughs> we know that, the, that um, your pastor thought he had a good voice. What did your family feel about your, your career choice? Well, when I started out really, you see, I used to DJ. And my father and my mother, they listened to very high quality music, classics. Mm. You know, all the great singers, Brooke Benton, Otis Redding, you name them, all the Motown and the greats. And they listened to the reggae like John Holt, Delroy Wilson, Pat Kelly, all of them, you know, so they had a very high quality standard for music. Yeah. So when me start, now me start DJ like big youth and you okay. right. Yeah. And my father used to say, well, you know, top in that is in that place, man. <laughs> See? But he would say it in a jokey way because after a while he started helping me with, with the music thing where he would buy me a, a system with microphone, I could record myself and him. Yeah. So you know, him just buy it and bring it come and say, all right, are you hold that? <laughs> so you have to work with. Yeah, and mom, mama always say, playing football and singing, now I'm gonna make you no money. Go long I work. <laughs> so I forgot to work. And what she say now? But when I did a song, 1979, called Good Morning. Yeah. And every song I make, I make sure I bring my mother a copy and put it down. So when I did Good Morning, um, I put on the record and I played for her. And when she heard the song, she said to me, My God, where you get such a good voice? <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. That gave me license. Your top fan. To sing. Yeah. Because mom said, Where you get this good voice? So, Everything done. Yeah, de uh -huh. definitely. Who or what inspired you to write and who were your colleagues at the time? Who inspired me to write? Write, write, write songs. Write songs. Mm. I grew up, as I say, listening to quality singers, two mom and dad. So, when it comes to, I was singing songs what, um, you know, Sam Cooke sing. I was just singing along to those songs. Growing up, John Holt, you know, all of the great. Delroy was my favorite. Yeah. I, I was always singing to their songs, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I find, say, well, boy, I, when I was in school now, the, the, the girls used to take me on the school bench at dinner time. And they used to come and they used to say, I want you to sing this song for me. And it could be like one of the big tunes that are happening, like a Dennis Brown song or yeah. a, a John Holt, any one of them, Bob, anyone. And they would say, come sing that song there for me. But because we, as you, collected records, yeah. I collect records, I've been collecting records from my little youth. And even now, if I go out and I see a record I want, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. So I've always been collecting records. So they know that um, any tune them come with, more time I will know the song. Yeah. So they come with the song, they come and say, sing this one for me. And I start singing. And I'm singing some. I'm in a dancing mood, I'm in a dancing mood. I'm singing all them songs like Dennis Brown. Took a walk and pass her house late last night. And any song them come with us, they sing it. So I, I've been singing it. Yeah. So how I really get, the, the, one of the things that happened to me, which was a good thing, I think, to bring me into the industry was 
one of the girls them at school, my friend, she knew a producer called Tony Ashfield. And he was producing John Holt's album, John Holt's Sing For I. And they brought me there to the house and introduced me to the producer. And the producer said, sing something for me, for year and we start sing and we say, yeah. I'm saying, no, I'm going to give you some of John Walt rhythm and you work with Terry. And this was Terry Newman, famous in the industry. And he said to Terry, Terry, I want to work with this youth here, work with this youth. So I started singing on some of John Walt's track. So what they do is they just give me the clean rhythm track. Yeah. And I had to sing the same song with John Walt sing. Over it. Yeah. yeah, so I was practicing like this and doing this and doing this and doing this until, you know, another virgin come and just start taking my studio and record tune and, you know, and it just start grow from there. Yeah. Mm. Why is music important to you? Why is music important, important to, to me? you? Yeah. Uh, without music means nothing. <laughs> because you see the thing with music, music is your life. Music make you live long, you know. Mm -hmm. Even scientists come out the other day and say dancing will improve your brain and all them things there. You know, just by dancing and things. Because music is life. Yeah. You know, and no one, are we, can live as long as music. Never. Never. So I would say music alone shall live. Yeah. And no one, are we, can, can live, outlive music. Because you think of it, we're listening. Sometimes we go out on a Saturday night and we are listening to a tune that older than we. Yeah. Definitely. So you see what I'm saying? So you know, music is life, and without music, we would nothing. Because we would be some kind of um, bad man or something. <laughs> but music steer me away from that, from a youth, because when I finish um, work, when I started working, nine to five, when I finished work, it was rehearsal, and then home. No time for nothing. And else. then work, and then rehearsal. Yeah. Saturday night is dance and wherever and wherever find it and you know? Yeah. So, you know, with that kind of life there and that 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 period of time, you know, that we had, I mean, um that's gone. Yeah. You know, that's gone. We've we've had it. <laughs> so, you know, yeah man, we have to keep that luck in our art. Definitely. Yeah. Your music's taken you around the world. Which countries have you performed in and which are most memorable to you? Wow. Well, I can tell the most memorable one is South Africa. South Africa. Great things happen in South Africa. They've called, they called me back three times, three, three years straight. And um, it was uh, an experience because I think this was, I got there five years, or maybe less than five years after apartheid yeah. they say it was over so when I got there I saw a lot of things opened my eyes to a lot of things you know yeah. see how fortunate some of we are yeah you know and see how unfortunate the others are how did you find the language barrier no language barrier because she will say well a lot of people in South Africa speak English okay. and if you don't speak English we can always communicate and there's always somebody or someone around. Would you mind sharing the current struggles you think a recording artist may face? Out of the one million, make us see where you're going to start. Number one, the platform for an artist, whether a new artist, young artist coming up, or a current one who's there. From we as black people, we must know this. We're not going to get the help or the exposure or anything. We're not going to get none of that. Yeah. The reason is this. Music is a thing we make money. Yeah. So therefore, in any any industry where black people are concerned, 
they're not going to allow you to to progress and you know, and excel mm. to where you where, where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Because the thing about it is that we are so talented. We are so talented in every single way you can think about it. I agree. So, because of this now, say them was to put Vivian Jones in at the right place because I've recorded, I've been recording music for like 45 years now. I've written, sung, produced number one songs in our industry. Mm. I'm still making songs now that are doing great things around the world right now. So if I was to really start, if I was to get the 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 the, 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 the promotion I'm supposed to get, like how any other privileged white people can get, mm -hmm. I would be in a position to employ much people. I would be in a position to set up um, business that our people can, you know, thriving. Driving, see, bringing the youths them into the music business, you know, and things like that. Yeah. So you find, say, because we don't get none of the privilege, see, then we here now, we have to just do what we have to do. And we can't give up because we're not deaf on TV or them now go play with music from Radio 1 and them something. We can't bother about that. Forget that. Because Nine out, nine out of ten a week coming out of this business here, see? Because of the love. Yeah. It wasn't because we come in and say, well, boy, we are going to make some, some big money and thing and very, very, and very, very, and very. Mm. When we were started out in this thing here, we used to do show and never get paid. Yeah. But we get up, <laughs> Monday morning, we get up and we go and work. For the money. Yeah. For the money. Yeah. But the, the work could never give you the joy. See what the music give you. Definitely. Could have never so therefore, you know what I mean? We never even think about that. So as I said, we never come in here for the money, but yes, we must get paid for our works. Mm -hmm. And we must get reduced. See? So mm -hmm. and, and them now give it. So we have to do what we can do and just continue the works and and, 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 and We give gotta support ourselves as well though. Yeah man. We have to support ourselves, but that is a hard thing. A uh, thing right here now when we there in England yeah, especially. Yeah. You know, because we have them have so much different um version for jump on to. You know, some of the people them them jump on to that version there and it's nothing to do with them. Them jump on to that version, nothing to do with them and, and left for them thing that they are spoiled. It's true. See? Yeah. We're in, you know what I mean? It's more what we have man. See? Okay. One more thing, I tell you this. You see if England want to make some money, set you free in the industry. Let us do what we want to do. Open the gate them. So yeah. BBC, ITV, whichever network, we can be there as well. Because they want no. Even when we are doing music, we have to pay, we have to pay tax enough. We can't go to the person plant and don't pay no tax. We can't do this and do that and not pay no tax. So we yeah. have to pay tax and we've been paying tax from we was working nine to five. Yeah. That's what I said. So it's like I said, don't, them don't even want the tax. As long as we don't get through. Mm. It's like them don't even want the money. They don't want it because they don't want we get through. And if we forget you, we have to get, receive the goods. Yeah. What have you currently got in the pipeline? Oh. Well, I'll tell you this. I have bookings right now until next year August. Um, Book up. See? They are not like every week, every week, every week. Yeah. But there's bookings and there's, there's it's, it's all around, all over the world. Yeah. You understand me? So so therefore it's like, you know what I mean, I, I really have to give thanks for, for what what take place for me right now after forty five years. You know? Yeah. And um that the, the music that I did from as a youth, those music are still in demand now and those music are still carrying me through. Yeah. You know? What do you think of the UK lovers rock scene? And UK lovers rock scene, it's not so much a scene anymore. 
tell me what you think of it. It's not so much of a scene anymore because what made the UK Lovers Rock um, thing in the UK was we had we had um, earplay, we had vinyls to sell, we had charts, um, many different clubs that we could go perform and things and seeing. So that made the industry really, you know, a one away thing by itself. Mm -hmm. Did great things for England, where even Jamaican musicians come here and come on to the thing and yeah. embrace the thing and, and did great things here as Lovers Rock. Yeah. Now, with the Lovers Rock thing now, it's like, you can see Olanda in the camera, yeah? Yeah. All right. <laughs> You see what he is, has been doing for the last, how much years? Ten. ten. For the last ten years, becomes now an occasion. It's now something. Yeah. So that you'll see, no matter, uh, these people was there last year, and they're there again this year. And the people that was here the, the year before, you understand me? Yeah, the I people do. them come because that is a occasion where they're going to hear the music <coughs> like them used to hear the music all those years ago in, when the thing did up there. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. So this is a great thing. Yeah. No, but we don't have a lot of these things. Yeah. We don't have no charts. We don't have records releasing on vinyl. Since so, and the download thing it, it go round but it it, it, it not go round so, so fast. And it no um it not generate the funds what we would a vinyl would or a C D would generate. Yeah. So when I see if a, if an artist do a tune now, the hardest thing is for him to even get it on the airways, to even make people hear it. Mm. Because you can get to as much pirate DJ as you want. You can run it on Facebook as much as you want, but you know, it's not everybody's that way with music, no. like on the internet and things. It's not everybody's that way, yeah. you know. I find now that with me, I release a lot of vinyl records because I don't only just do lovers. <laughs> I do a lot of roots. Yeah. And once I leave England and and go to any country in the world. I have to play the roots lecture. Yeah. They might okay. have to play my they might ask for a few lovers, but it's the roots selection so, okay. and records songs that I have done from nineteen eighty. Yeah. You know, a lot of those songs they're asking for. And of course the latest roots on them. See? So the lovers rock industry kinda weak. It needs an injection, a life. Mm. You know, we're in you know, we have more of them show ya. You know, places where people can go on and, and hear the music and thing on. <coughs> One more thing. It's hard for we to go in our club, put our clothes on, say we are go, 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 have a good time. Mm. And when we go in our place, you have some of them selectors here. Them put on a sweet tune and play 30 second night. Yeah. And then them take you off and put on something else. Yeah. And and this juggling thing around like say it's a sound clash thing and in, in, in of them something there you know. So enough of them places I can't go. It no make sense me go. Yeah. See if I depend on a show I'm not have works so I go on better I just sit down and, and watch match of the day. <laughs> so, yeah. Alright. Please tell the Firewood family about your collaborations. Yeah. Who you've done collaborations with. Yeah, my greatest one is, is with the, the, the late great Deborah Glasgow. See, and I've done some other big tune with Sylvia Teller, mm. a friend. And um, I can't even think right now, but there's, been, there's, there's, there's quite a few more. Quite a few more. You should have known not to test my okay. sound. Yeah. My sound is a champion sound. I come around is a idiot sound. We every sound just box them down. Burning. <laughs> Mr. Fire Red is burning. 
And I said, burning, burning, burning. If I are red, you're just burning. Thank you. I know very you never much. expect that. No, you know, not at all. You, you would have looked for something like extra classic, a super fantastic love. Fire, fire is fire, burning. Fire, 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 fire. Thank you. It's been amazing. Thank you very much.